Welcome to another one of our old home remodeling videos and in this one here we're going to add a gable roof overhang to the home. So I went ahead and modified the video so that it does not have a roof overhang. And this is another common method of building homes like they did a long time ago. And you could imagine they would be saving a few dollars by doing something like this. And in this video, I will not be providing you with step-by-step -step instructions or instructions that will work on every single old house because they did a lot of things different. However, I think you will get a general idea, something that will be helpful if you're planning on doing something like this. So the first thing I want to do is remove the sheathing, even though you do not need to remove all of the sheathing. You can remove the sections of the sheathing that you need to remove, and that would include all of the framing that you would need to make your new overhang work. So again, we're just kind of whipping around here, getting an idea of what the home might look like if it was built without an overhang. Now the first thing we're going to need to do will be to cut some framing supports. And you can usually do this with 2x4s that will be spaced 32 inches on center. And this design should work for what I'm guessing 18 inches and less. But I've definitely used this method here on 12 inch overhangs with good results. And if you have a situation where you have a rafter that is less than the cantilevered length, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that, a board can usually stick out one third, and if it does, it will need to go back two thirds. If we're coming out 10 and a half inches then we will need to go back at least 21 inches and that usually won't be a problem on older homes where the rafters are spaced 24 inches on center and to do this we will need to lay out the spacing of our lookouts 32 inches on center this one will be 32 inches from this edge to this edge and then you can work your way down now it can be less but you could run into a problem if you start spacing them a little farther apart. And I'm not about to suggest that something like this won't work where you cantilever out 10 inches and come back here 10 inches. But I can suggest that that won't be the norm for this type of construction. So for using two by fours, we're gonna notch an inch and a half deep by three and a half inches wide. And I would try to make sure that you don't have any nails in the cutting area. Another problem that you're going to run into when remodeling older homes that have plenty of nails in the existing roof rafters from the sheathing or other parts of the framing. And to install these, all you need to do will be to fasten them with some 16D nails. And this is usually a nail that's a little longer than three inches. And two nails would do here, two nails here, and even a couple of nails over here. Now there are going to be some times when the sheathing is going to be in the way. You're not going to want to remove all of the sheathing to end nail the back of this block. If that's the case, you can angle nail or toe nail the blocking into the roof rafter. So this would be one method. This would be another method if you could end nail the back of the roof rafter into the block. And again, either method should be fine. Now you might be able to install the blocks at the length you need them to be. However, imperfections in the wall framing and the lumber could create a problem, especially if you're trying to create the straightest fascia board you possibly can. So I'd recommend installing the blocks a little bit longer and then cutting them off later to keep everything straight. So once we figure out the length we're going to need for our fascia board, in this case here, it's going to be 12 inches from the inside of the wall to the outside of the fascia board. So I installed the blocks a little bit longer, and then I'm going to make a mark at 10 and a half inches. And that will be at the bottom here and at the top up here. That way we can use a chalk line or some type of a straight edge to mark the rest of the block. So if we used a chalk line, we'd simply hook one part of the chalk line here, pull the string out, and then tighten it up here, and then simply snap a line. And that should look something like this when you're done. And what I meant by imperfections is it's not uncommon to have a section of the rafter leaning in, or a section of the wall that isn't perfectly straight. 
And if you don't use this method, you could end up with blocks that are a little short or a little long. And then that would create a piece of fascia board that wouldn't be perfectly straight. Then you can go ahead and cut all of the lookouts where they need to be cut and then install the fascia board. And for those of you who don't know how to install fascia board or are looking for a little more information about the installation of the fascia board, then continue watching. However, if you don't, feel free to stop the video right here. And we will go ahead and provide you with an example of how you might be able to install your fascia board. Now keep in mind that scaffolding might be required to build something like this, or even some long ladders. I will leave that up to you. Now the number one thing I want to point out is that you need to make sure that you're going to have enough length here for the overhang that's going to be running in this direction here. So make sure that you double check this measurement because the last thing you want to do is cut everything and find out that this board was a little short. So again, double check this measurement here and make sure that it's overhanging a little bit along with at the top. And then once we have the fascia board attached to our lookouts, and you can always use some screws. Put one screw here, one screw at the bottom, and then make your cuts. And then if you need to move the fascia board in either direction, then you'll be able to do that a lot easier than you will if you nailed the heck out of the fascia board to the lookouts. Now to mark the plumb cut on the fascia board, all we need to do is line up a straight edge with the center of the ridge. And if there's no ridge, then you would be using the center of the roof where the rafters meet. So in our example here, we have a one inch thick ridge and we're simply going to come in a half inch and then a half inch here, maybe draw a couple of lines and then line the straight edge up all the way to the fascia board and then make a mark on the fascia board so that the plumb line can be right where it needs to be in the center. And the mark doesn't need to be that big. Once you have it there, you can grab a level and then you can draw a plumb line after you have positioned the level exactly where it needs to be. And the line for our project would look something like this. And then you could remove the fascia board or cut it in place. And then you could grab a framing square or transfer the mark somehow to another piece of fascia board because this should be the same as the one on the other side. And you could always use a speed square for that. And if you're off a little bit, for example, when you install this piece and then you go to install this one, you notice that there's a gap at the top or the bottom. Then you could simply make the necessary modifications by trimming a little bit off of the top. If there's a gap at the top, you're going to want to trim a little bit off of the bottom of this piece here and then simply pull it tight. And when everything looks good, you are good to go. And you can nail the fascia board with two nails. Remember, these are exterior nails. They're going to need to be galvanized, zinc coated, or even stainless steel. Something that isn't going to corrode or hopefully something that won't corrode. And you could always angle these nails a little bit. They don't need to be driven in straight. In the same way that you can angle these nails over here and back nail from the other side of the roof rafter into the block. And you can always put a couple of nails on each side. And after you have nailed your ridge block in, you should be finished with this side of the building. And in our next video, or the next video that I make on this, I will put a link here, or a link in the video description box. However, if I miss it somehow, let me know, and I will make the changes necessary so that everybody can find the next video link. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the video comment area, and I will answer them as soon as possible.